welcome to lecture 6 on computer architecture so we'll continue our discussion so in the last uh, lecture we discussed about uh, the problem of uh, nested functions and uh, with limited registers uh, one of the issues that we discussed was the register spilling right so we uh, stopped uh, the previous lecture at a point where we wanted to uh, find a solution for the spilled register where exactly can we store so if you uh, remember the initial lectures we discussed that there are two places uh, from which the processor or the alu gets the data one is the registers uh, which is limited in size and capacity the other one is the memory right so uh, the problem that we are currently facing is we are running out of registers so the obvious answer is can we store the content of the registers in the memory so the MIPS way of handling it uh, is something called a stack. So stack is nothing but a part of VRAM or memory. So you can assume a few KBs of space uh, just for an example. Okay. And this stack space will be per function call. Okay. And so that makes it private per function call otherwise uh, the problem still remains the same uh, irrespective of register or memory unless you make it private to a particular function call uh, the register contained uh, will get over it uh, the way we have seen in the previous lecture right so now we need another register called stack pointer which will point to the address where stack ends okay so uh, let's understand how uh, this particular memory area, which is also known as stack behaves. So it grows downward, which means in terms of address range, if you start from let's say address X, it will go like this. And, right? So whenever you want to insert or push something into the stack, you have to increment your stack pointer, let's say from here to here and let's assume these are the contents right so you increment the stack pointer and put your register content let's say you want to store that for then again if you want to store another register here you increment get into address six minus eight and let's just store the content of r2 okay so this goes on uh in this direction okay so this is uh, bit counterintuitive so uh, be careful right so uh, before we jump into uh, the subtle issues uh, with respect to stack and uh, what kind of operations are performed when you deal with the stack part of the memory uh, the last lecture you are trying to find out a protocol between the caller and the callee of a uh, particular function right and who will be responsible for saving the register who will be responsible for you know, uh, making sure that the register values are uh, kind of, they are preserved across uh, different function calls. So th this is kind of the uh, top level answer for that question. So in MIPS, there are few registers which are temporary and they are caller saved registers, which means uh, when you are writing your MIPS program and if you are using these registers through a function call, so they won't be preserved across the function calls because these are caller saved. Okay. If you want some of your registers to be, uh, or, or the content of the registers to be uh, there across the function calls, right? The values should be preserved across the function calls. Then these are the registers. And these are known as the callee saved registers. Okay. So uh, I think in one of the labs, you have to. Uh, play with some of the caller and callee registers. So be careful uh, about this uh, convention. So some of the registers are by default caller uh, saved and some of them are callee saved and based on which uh, their semantics will change in terms of function call. So uh, at this moment, you can ask what, what happens to these two registers, right? The stack pointer and the return address register. So these two registers, if you uh, remember, right, we need them across the function calls. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll end up uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, the messy situation that we saw in the last lecture. So simple answer, we need these registers to be callee saved registers, 
so that it will be uh, there it will be preserved across function calls okay with that uh, let's move on to the stack and how stack works as i mentioned it grows downward so you can assume uh, if a caller wants to save something into the stack uh, the caller can put some register here okay and then after that if let's say the callee wants to save something right so the stack pointer will be uh, decremented that that's how it uh, goes down and it will uh, insert uh, the content of the register right once uh, the call is done it can pop it out right uh, so this two uh, entries or uh, the stack space is now free and uh, we are again at the beginning okay so let, let's see how we can do this push and pop operation because mips uh, doesn't have any push or pop instruction so since we are dealing with memory the first thing that comes into our mind is load and store instructions because load is an instruction through which you can load something from the memory and through store you can write something into the memory right so now if you want to uh, you know save something into the stack space let's say this was the content of stack when you started and the callee wants to save the content of register r4 right so what it has to do it has to perform this operation so that sp which was previously here will now move to sp minus 4 right so this is the new sp or start pointer right once you are here you can actually store the content of register r4 into the start pointer that means whatever r4 had is now present in this particular memory address remember this is the key we are not uh, we are not storing anything in the register now we have moved or we have migrated the content of register r4 into this particular memory location right so that's how you stay save and when you want to restore at the end of your function call uh pretty simple right so let's say this is the callee which is done uh, using r4 so now you want to restore it right so what you have to do you load it uh, whichever register you want to load let's say you want to load it to register r4 that means you are loading from this particular memory address into r4 okay and once you are done with the loading then this entry is free you can actually increment the stack pointer meaning now sp minus 4 will be incremented to sp so now this will point to this particular location right so uh, this is how uh, the stack pointer operates in the memory area which is called as a stack okay so you are dealing with four bytes because as we have uh, discussed in the previous lectures uh, we will be dealing with one word which is a four byte uh, kind of uh, MIPS. okay so uh, now let's see how uh, usage of stack pointer helps in uh, nested functions right because this was the problem if you remember in the previous lecture f1 calls f2 f2 calls f3 so in in this uh, so called uh, pseudo code i am showing that there are three uh, of uh, functions so cs305 is calling 405 and 505 this part is pretty clear you need to call jump and link okay but previously we are struggling with jump register because everything was getting overwritten right but now what will happen the moment you call there will be a stack space assigned for that particular call similarly for the next call and then for the final call 504 right and the stack pointer will store the corresponding rs the return address right and now let's say whenever you are done with this particular function that means you want to restore it so instead of uh, looking into the content of array now what you will do you will actually read the stack pointer the stack pointer currently is storing the return address right once this function is done you will return from cs405 so at this moment the stack pointer will store the array for that particular function call and uh, like that it continues right uh, no matter how many functions you have or no matter how many nested function calls you have right so this is the beauty of uh, the stack pointer and then now you, you should not be worried about what will happen to your return addresses right? there is one more subtle issue that we should uh, discuss here 
So uh, stack space in the DRAM or the memory, uh, let's assume this is the memory. So there is a, a region which is called as the stack. This is also used for storing local variables and uh, data structures, okay, along with your return addresses. So if you are uh, defining few variables or if you are defining your arrays and structure, so they are actually getting stored in stack because you don't have space in registers, right? So now what will happen is if you don't differentiate between these three, uh, the local variables, data structures, uh, local data structure and return addresses, your, your stack pointer will go up and down, right? Depending on where exactly you are. So uh, depending on a return address, your stack pointer may go up or down, right? So to help with this particular situation, what we have is something called a frame pointer. So this is an additional register. What it does, it does pretty simple thing. It points to the highest address of a function call or a procedure frame, right? So just, just to uh, make this thing uh, pretty simple, you can assume that initially this is the state of the program where function, uh, sorry, the frame pointer and the st stack uh, pointer both are pointing to a particular location. And after that, let's say procedure starts, which means SP will become SP minus four, right? So this frame pointer here actually stored the highest address. So remember, we grow downwards. So the highest address is actually here, right? In the maximum address. And that is pointed by the frame pointer. And this pointer stays there throughout the procedure. So let's say you have some registers uh, that you are saving, you have a return address, you have some locals, right? So this is the part of the stack uh, that you have used for a given procedure. Let's say if one called F2, and during that time, you have done all these things. So you have some local variables for that function. You have some registers that you have saved and you have your array, your return address, right? So depending on the nested functions or the number of functions you are uh, using, the stack pointer may go up and down, right? But the frame pointer will remain uh, there throughout till uh, you are done with this procedure, right? So this is just for, uh, you know, making the life of a compiler guy or for of a programmer guy uh, simple, uh, this frame pointer is introduced. So even if you don't have a frame pointer, you can actually, uh, if you are a disciplined programmer, you can actually uh, code with stack pointer and uh, offset. And uh, anyway, you can uh, 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 jump around and uh, look 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 into your data and all using frame pointer also. Okay. So. Uh, there's one thing that I want all of you to try out. Uh, so the, you should go to uh, P and H and look for this appendix, uh, specifically page number 827, and look into uh, the MIPS uh, conversion of uh, a factorial uh, code, finding a factorial of a number, okay? So that will make your understanding better and uh, it will help you in understanding uh, the notion of stack frame uh, or, or how stack and other functions are, uh, how stack space is used for, uh, you know, uh, calling and caller saving and uh, preserving data across uh, functions, okay? So you will find uh, the, these keywords that we have discussed. Uh, you will find some more uh, keywords maybe during the late uh, labs uh, through your TAs, but this is uh, good enough. Okay, uh, also I, I haven't talked about all the MIPS instructions that are there. I have just touched upon a uh, very few uh, to give you a top level view. Uh, maybe during the labs, you may encounter some more instructions. The goal is not to you know remember or understand each and every instruction, but the functionality or why some instructions are designed, uh, that is uh, a more important question to answer. With that, uh, I'll stop, but uh, if you are curious about some security issues related to the stack space, then you can go and look out for uh, something called stack buffer overflow, okay? Uh, this is pretty interesting stuff. You can actually see it uh, on your laptop by doing it. And uh, yeah, but but this is not part of CS305. This is, this is not a architecture content, but uh, if you are actually curious about uh, additional stuff on stack space then uh, go and uh, refer to this link with that uh, i'll stop thank you